This is the night the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice. Not only because we have a choice, but because we have a cause to rejoice. Amen. Amen. You know, one of the things we, we gathered, and we, last time we gathered, we were talking about the falling away and the things that are happening. And there are a lot of things happening right now. And as that falling away continues, one of the things that the Holy Spirit put on my heart was breaking the bondage of cycles. Because so many times we, some of us, uh, sometimes we've never come out of a cycle. We've come to a place to manage a cycle, but never been freed from it. And cycles return. And in these cycles, there are bondages. It's a bondage that's being managed. And we don't want bondages to be managed. We want to be free. And that's going to take dominion, isn't it? Amen? Would you for, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15? First Corinthians 15. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? In verse 33. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. What does it say? Do not be what? Do not be what? Do not be conned. Don't be misled. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Right? See, so many times people are looking at people, and that's, that's a part of it. But there is a, 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 there is a spirits that are bad company, and they corrupt good habits, don't they? So he's saying, look, at, don't be deceived, because it's not the person, it's the spirit. Amen? <laughs> Even, evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to what? Righteousness in verse 34, and do not what? Sin. Do not associate. Do not accept it. For some do not have this knowledge of God. This I speak to their shame. Again, bad company corrupts good habits. Remember, every thought, there is a voice. Every voice, there is a presence. Don't be deceived in who is speaking to you. That's what he's saying. Don't be, listen, if anything is against the knowledge of God, it's not God. If anything's promoting you, it's not God. If it's encouraging you, it's God. If it's promoting you, it's not God. If it's promoting the works of the flesh, it's not God. Exodus 20. Hallelujah. Breaking bondage cycles. Not manage, breaking. Exodus 20. We're going to start at verse 1. Glory. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of what? Bondage. That means world. I brought you out of the world. We are out of the world. So that means you can't keep one hand in the world and one hand with God. You know what happens? You go in a circle. You cycle. It's only when both hands are on the Lord that you break the cycle. Let's go a little further. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generations and those who hate me, but showing mercy to a thousands 
to those who love me and what? Keep my commands or my word. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servant nor your female servant nor your cattle nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness or lie against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Now, now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. And they said to Moses, you speak with us and we'll hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. And Moses said to the people, do not fear for God has come to test you. Why? So that his fear, that his what? Fear may be before you. So that you may what? Not sin. So that his fear may be before you. That's relationship. Reverence, honor, and respect. So no matter what you do, there's a reverence and honor and respect. Now, this is powerful because it says, So the people stood afar off, but Moses, what? Drew near the thick darkness where God was. Everyone else backed off, and Moses was the only one that drew near. Does everybody get that? Now think about it. The rest, they were all in the wilderness. And how many made it to the promised land? Two. See, so the Lord took them out of bondage, out of the world, set them out in the wilderness to teach them, to train them. What he did is he took them, put them in the wilderness so Egypt could come out of them, so the, the world could come out of them. Many were willing and some weren't. Some were still not grabbing hold of God with both hands and some were only grabbing hold of one hand and it kept them in the cycle. And they grumbled, they complained, and they did everything else because they didn't trust God. They lost that reverence. See, they thought God was at a distance when he wasn't. Amen? In Galatians chapter 2. Galatians 2 and verse 1, and it says, And after 14 years I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. This is Paul. And I went up by revelation. I went by what? Revelation. Let me share something with you, vitally important. The word says that the word is no revelation, restraints come off. What's the restraints? Restraints of the flesh. So that's why it's important that you and I look for revelation. You look for illumination and revelation. What the Spirit of God is releasing to us now, you look for illumination and revelation. It's something that you use. It's not something you just hear and go, oh, good. You put it to practice. Because without it, if you're just here listening and not hearing, then you're not set right. Then you're doing time. And you won't change. None of us will change. Because we're just listening. Same thing with worship. If you're not worshiping to him, does everybody get it? See, you worship to him. When you worship him, that's why you should say every one of these words. Don't start closing your eyes and drifting off. Speak the word because you're sowing. You are speaking to him. And while you're speaking to him, you're changing. This is not religion. Does everybody get this? When we're reading the word, read it. 
Stop looking around the room. It ain't going to do you no good. You must so, so, so to you, so what? And you change. You must break that yoke. And that yoke causes a price. And the price is cooperation. Or you'll let go and you'll go in that circle again. And it happens. Amen? Amen. Okay. <laughs> Let's go verse 2 again. And I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not yet even Titus, who was with me being a Greek, was compelled to be what? circumcised go back into bondage of religion and this occurred because false brethren secretly brought in who came in by stealth or to spy out our liberty or freedom that we have in Christ these are spirits they call them false brethren but it isn't brethren but a spirit will use anyone that lets them That they might bring us into what? Bondage again. To whom we did, not sub we did not yield submission even for an hour. That the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But from those who seemed to be something, whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. God shows personal favoritism to no man. For those who seemed to be something added nothing to me. But on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for uncircumcised had been committed to me as the gospel for circumcision was to Peter, for he who worked effectively in the Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we, may, that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Again, the enemy's trying to bring us in that arena of the cycle of bondage. It must be broke. You know, the enemy uses and brings things. He'll use your family. He'll use anyone and anything to reconnect you does everybody get it? To reconnect you. To reconnect you to what? Emotions. To reconnect you to a desire. To reconnect you to a lie. To reconnect you to a stronghold. To reconnect you or to keep you connected and you don't even know that you still are. And when you come around to that cycle, you manage it. We are done managing. Freedom is required by the spirit of the living God. Amen? You know, there's circumstances. People get offended. What, what Pride, offense, deception, events, all kinds of things can cause it. Listen, no matter what, you can lose something and be so angry and reconnect something. Galatians 4. Is everybody there? <laughs> Should be. In verse 8, Galatians 4, verse 8. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are what? Not gods. But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in what? Bondage. Why? Because when, when that cycle comes up, they turn to it and they grab hold of it. Many times it could be fear. Fear. Where individuals return to the bondage cycle. And Luke 11 Hallelujah. 
verse 16. And it says that others were testing. Jesus sought from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house what? Falls. A house. So what's the enemy always trying to do? Divide you. He always try, How does he do it? He brings doubt. He brings offense. He bring, then I see, you know, you hear things coming out of your mouth, but then your house is divided. In verse 18, if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Because you say, I cast out demons by Beelzebub. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But I cast out demons with the finger of God. Surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are what? In peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his what? Armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. I want you to understand that the enemy will always try to strip you from your armor. Always. He tries to convince you you don't need to put it on. That God, God knows your heart. You have grabbed hold of the cycle and you've let go of God. And you've grabbed hold of the world. As soon as you don't put your armor on. Does everybody understand that? It says, why? Because this is what happens. He who is not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me does what? scatters then it says this look at this and when an unclean spirit goes out of a man he goes through dry places seeking rest and finding none he says i will what return return let me tell you when that spirit returns so do you you go right into that cycle and it manifests i will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds his swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. Remember, the enemy wants to disarm us by removing our full armor. And what happens when that happens? A house becomes divided because the spirit returns back to the house. And we return back to bondage cycle again. Now, there are times when you can manage it and there are times when you can't, depending on your position and where you are. In 2 Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 18. You know, these voices, it's amazing because these voices, these spirits will use a person or they'll just come up next to you and speak to you. In verse 18 it says, For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure... Through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in ear. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome by him, also he is brought back into what? Bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome that the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit. Dog meaning a, an individual has allowed a spirit in them. And, and so, having watched, having washed to her wallowing in mire. In other words, that spirit, only the spirit can cause you to manifest after that 
cycle. He is the connector. The powers of darkness, the spirit, evil spirits are there. Again, there are times when you manage them and there are times when they manage us, depending on where we are at. Amen? But you must begin to understand that there is a cycle. And that cycle comes to every single one. No one escapes that cycle. Unless it's broken. Now, he always wants to reattach you to it, doesn't he? So you may be doing time, or you may be doing management, but eventually that cycle is going to manifest. If you're just managing or doing time, you must be free from it. So that when it comes around again, it has no touch on you. And again, not all come out of it. Not everyone comes out of it. It's necessary to break this cycle because it's also called oppression. When that cycle comes, it brings oppression. And that oppression causes a person to look every, anywhere else. When a person is oppressed, demons bring oppression. And there's no medication to rescue you. Acts chapter 10. Breaking bondage cycles. Verse 37. The word you know which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached how God what? Anointed. How God what? Anointed. Huh. Who did he anoint? Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were what? Oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. In other words, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty that will break that cycle. Is everybody with me? It is a yoke. That means that you and I must maintain the anointing. In Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. In verse 27. Let's read it. And it shall come to pass in that day that the what? Burden. That his burden will be what? Taken away from his shoulder and his yoke from your neck. The yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. That's why it is vitally important when we gather together. That you don't give up and worship. That is a fruit of a cycle. Does everybody understand that? That cycle will come around. If you can't bust through, you'll be busted. It's just a matter of time. So it didn't happen today, didn't happen tomorrow, but it will come. See, people get complacent, compromised, and lazy. They no longer seek the Lord with all their heart. Now they're doing time. It's no longer, I love you, and I love you, and I'm going to sing to you because you're my everything. Now it becomes religious, ritual, tradition, ordinance. And that cycle is already reconnected, and it's going to come around. See, so you managed it, managed it, managed it. At one time, you won't manage it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 58. 
The yoke of bondage cycle can be broke by the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. It's our responsibility to maintain it. Isaiah 58. Now, there are severe cycles and there are simple cycles. There's all kinds of cycles. There's something that a habit has been created. A habit is a, is a fruit of a cycle. It must be broke. Oh, man, I just always do this. Well, then stop it. For we, we bury you alive. <laughs> In a box, <laughs> a shoe box. <laughs> but in this, in other words, there is a habit that is a cycle. And, and, and so many times we go, oh, man, you know, I, I, I did it again. I did it again. I did. That's a cycle. And it, and it might not be destructive now, but I'm going to tell you, it will increase to destruction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 58, is everybody there? In verse 6. Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Fast. Fast means separation. Now, it could be mean, depending on what God's doing, it could be for not eating, the whole purpose of fast is to separate you from the world. That's the purpose of fast. You are separating. You are chastening your soul, your flesh. You fast, so you're separating yourself from worldly pleasures. You're separating yourself. Does everybody understand that? It is not always food, and sometimes it is food, but there might be something different. might be something that you like to do. The Lord says, lay it aside, because you keep putting that before me. Verse 7. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? In other words, now he's saying something just because you are denying yourself with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked, that you cover him and not hide yourself from your flesh. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer and you shall cry and he will say, here I am. Now are you ready? If, if, that means you have a choice to obey or disobey. If you take away the yoke from your midst, that might be an idol. The pointing of the finger, accusing. And the speaking of wickedness, condemning. Rebelling, grumbling, complaining. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul... Then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually. How many of y'all want the Lord to guide you continually? I'm going to be careful what you say. <laughs> and satisfy your soul in your drought, in drought, and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden. Yeah. And like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to dwell in. Man, that's building the kingdom of God. But you got to die. Amen. Amen. We've got to stop the accusing, the pointing of the finger. Keeps you in the cycle. Hallelujah. Maintaining the anointing. 2 Corinthians chapter 6.
Do not be unevenly yoked together with what? Unbelief. Someone that's not following. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial? In other words, what character of Christ with demons? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I will be their God. And they shall be my people. If you'll do this, what? Come out from among them and be a separate, says the Lord. And do not touch. Do not touch. Do not touch. With thought, with word, or with hand. Anything that is unclean. Why? It will reattach you. And then I'll be your father, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Don't fall into the pride of carnality. That's exactly what it is. It is the pride of carnality. Does everybody understand that? Why? Right. Because when we do choose to touch it, it's prideful. It's rebellious. And then we think we're okay. That's okay, I can do this. See, if, there was, if there's not an arena of preventative maintenance, amen? If you don't change your oil, you know what's going to happen? Your engine's going to eventually seize. If you don't put air in your tires, you're going to eventually go flat and get stuck somewhere. If you don't put gas in your car, you're going to be calling your neighbor. That's called preventative maintenance, isn't it? If we, that's why you must strike first every day. If you're not willing to strike first, you will be struck. And that will put you right in that cycle. You'll try and manage it. You'll manage it for a few days. But you got to repent, turn from it, and break it with your tongue, your mouth. By repentance, turning, commanding those spirits to go. Break those habits. Break those cycles. You see them. You see, they come up. You know exactly what they are. Don't manage it. Don't stick it under the rug and hope that God takes care of it. He says, you take care of it. Hallelujah. That's the fall of the pride of carnality in Hebrews chapter 3. Breaking bondage cycles. Lust, fear, all of those things. Pride is a bondage cycle. Anxiety, stress, worry. All of these things, they're cycles. That's what the enemy wants to do, keep us in a cycle. Hebrews 3, verse 7. Let's read it. Therefore, the Holy Spirit says today, if you what? Hear his voice. Okay, now listen. He doesn't mean that you heard his voice and ignored it. He means that you heard his voice because to hear his voice, you obey it. To listen, you ignore it. If you will hear his voice and don't harden your hearts as in the day of rebellion. So if you do hear his voice in some way, and you choose to reject it, you have hardened your heart. Does everybody understand that? So what you have said is no to God, and when you say no to God, you say yes to the devil. You say yes to an unclean spirit, you say yes to something else. When you say no to God, you say yes to another spirit. Does everybody get it? Do not harden your hearts as in a rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray where? In their heart. And they have not known my way. So I swore my wrath they will not enter my rest. There's not rest. There's torment. 
Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of the presence of evil, which is called sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if, if, if we what? Hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. That means you grab hold of God with both hands. While it is said, if you will hear his voice and do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who having heard rebelled, indeed was it not all who came out of Egypt. Even they came out of the house of bondage, they still rebelled because their hearts were still hardened because they didn't get what they wanted. Led by Moses. Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief. Hardened heart. A heart that rejects. A mind that rejects. Does everybody get it? We reject it. We say no. And when you say no to God, you say yes to a spirit. Well, I just don't believe all this stuff. But then you said yes to a, a demon. In Mark 7. <clears throat> Mark chapter 7. Verse 5. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked Jesus, Why do your disciples not walk according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? Well, they were so accustomed to their ordinances and traditions. And he asked and said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? As it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is what? Far from me. This is where you become familiar with something. You become familiar with the worship. You become familiar with the teaching. You become familiar with things. In other words, you begin to compromise. You are no, you're losing that hunger. And when you lose that hunger, you begin to drift. Why? Because when you lose that hunger, you miss revelation. Does everybody get this? When you miss revelation, then the restraints go off. And you look for fulfillment in flesh instead of fulfillment in revelation. You look for fulfillment in accomplishment. You look for fulfillment in things of the world. You look for fulfillment in things that you've done with your hands or things that you've put in your mouth. Does everybody get this? This is what's so important about revelation. That's why every time we gather together, every time you're reading the Bible, every day you're looking for revelation from God. What's he saying to me? What's he showing me? I want to stay hungry no matter what. And then when we come to a corporate worship, we seek him. We minister to him, fulfilling your priesthood. Because if you can't fulfill your priesthood, you cannot be a warrior. And the enemy knows where you have priestly garments on. It's called under armor. <laughs> Amen? Amen. That, the only way you can put your armor on is they have under armor, right? Amen. Or you can't move, man. You start hurting and stuff. Oh, you can't move that sore. Yeah. <laughs> and it'd be too cold sometimes because it's metal. Hallelujah. So he says, listen, what's happened now is the heart has lost relationship. It's now a relationship with the mind. This is what keeps people in cycles. You they can't, when you see, the Holy Spirit sets boundaries around us. He, he lets you know. He knows. When you say, well, the Lord knows my heart. Yes, he does. And he's saying, look at Your heart is drifted. You're now 
in relationship out of your mind instead of out of your heart. So there's not a heart effect, it's a mind effect. So it no longer becomes a love affair. It's a long-distance relationship. It's a hope that God hears. It's a hope that God sees. It's a hope that he'll answer. It's a hope, not a knowing. It's different. And it keeps a person in a cycle. Amen? Verse 8, uh, verse 7. And in vain they worship me. Let's read verse 6 again. And he answered and said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites? As it's written, the people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as the doctrines of the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups and many other things such you do. And he said to them, all too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your traditions, that you may keep yourself alive instead of denying yourself. It's when we become too familiar, no longer respect of the presence of God, no longer hungry and thirsty for his presence. It's just another ordinance, another thing. Amen? Amen. Ezekiel chapter 36. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. In verse 22. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? We're just laying a foundation. Twenty-two. Therefore says the house, therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you have went. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst, and the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am what? Hallowed in you before their eyes. In other words, when somebody sees that your relationship with the Lord is the most important thing, and they see the fruit of meekness, they see the fear of the Lord, they see the reverence you have for God. They see the separation from the world. They see, that, they see that you are different. That's when he's hallowed in you, when he's honored in you. See, relationship is inward, not outward. Amen? It's inward. It always starts inward. If there's a true relationship with the Lord, man, it doesn't matter. You don't think about yourself no more. You think about what pleases him and what his will and destiny is for you in this world. But it's his, not ours. Verse 24. And I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all the countries and bring you into your own land, the place of position. And then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Verse 26. And I will give you a what? A new heart, and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And then what? I will put my spirit within you. Whoa! And do what? cause you to walk in my statutes and to keep my judgments and do them. Mm. My spirit. That's when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit and his spirit is connector. And many times when you grieve the spirit, it's disconnect. I'll put my spirit in you to connect you to me. Has everybody got this? 
I'm going to give you my spirit to connect to me. Then we'll be spirit to spirit. And then you will love me and you'll know how much I love you. You will know who you are because you carry my identity in you. And you will no longer acknowledge me out through the mind, the carnal mind. You acknowledge me from spirit to spirit. There is a knowing that there's a knowing that there's a knowing. And so you're not going to come to me and, and ask me things that you know I don't approve of. That's what he says. Because you know me. So you don't ask for something out of God's time. You don't ask for something that you already know. You don't go, well, maybe, maybe I hope, well, maybe. No. If you've got to think about it, it ain't God's time. Does everybody understand it? Yes, we have not because we ask not. But we ask according to his will, and according to his will is his time. So don't, we don't try to manipulate God to get something. That's not relationship. Not, no, no relationship at all. You might as well pull out some money and try and buy it from him. And then people try to brought, well, Lord, you know, if you'll do that, I'll do this. That's bribery. That's manipulation. You can't manipulate the one that created you. <laughs> That's not relationship. Does everybody get this? Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I'll be your God, and I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. I will call for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine on you. Why? Because that's his promise to us. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase of your fields so that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. In other words, I will take care of you. I will bless you. I will be with you. Just hold on to me. Stop letting go and going in circles. Has everybody got this? <laughs> Get back on course. Fulfill the destiny that he has for us. All right. What begins to happen is disconnect. Everyone say disconnect. When there is disconnect, that means there's a connect to something else. Remember, when you reject the voice of God, you accept the voice of a devil. When there's a connect, disconnect from the spirit of God, there's a, a connect to a spirit. Does everybody understand this? And that's what, so the enemy is just preparing you for that cycle. You know, the word says he's setting a trap up for you. And if you haven't broke, if, if that cycle has not been broke, then you'll try and manage it. And you may get away with managing it. But who wants to manage demons? That's not freedom, isn't it? All right, let's go a little further. First John chapter 5. And I will get put my spirit in you. First John chapter 5, verse 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when the love of God, because we love God and keep his what? Commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his word, his commands. And his commandments are not burdensome. Listen, when there's truly a relationship Following the Lord isn't burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. 
And this is a victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Now, who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that and follows that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he who came by, by what? By water and blood, right? Cool. And not only water and blood, but his what? Spirit. Who what? Bears witness because the spirit is what? Truth. Come on, y'all. I think this is so cool. All right, so he, this is Jesus coming, right? And the spirit bears truth. Now. Here, here is the kicker. Are you ready? For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father. The Word. And the Spirit. Woohoo! Those are the three that bear witness in heaven. Father, Word, and Spirit. Right? Okay. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. It is the Spirit. Whoa! The water and the blood, and these agree as one, or, or, yeah, agree as one. So what connects the physical to the spiritual? The spirit. So when there's a disconnect, when there's a disconnect, we go to the world. Does everybody get this? We open ourselves to other things when there's a disconnect, that's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to get us to disconnected to the Spirit of God. That's his job, and he does it well. Go to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4 and verse 25. Is everybody there? We're going to speak this together. So worship connects. Speaking the word connects. Amen. Hearing connects. Repentance connects. Verse 25, therefore putting away what? Lying. Manipulation. Don't bribe nobody or God. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. How are you going to give place? Well, look, when you give place to the devil, there's disconnect. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, because you will be disconnected. Whom you were sealed for the Day of redemption, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, or evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ forgave you. So when you make place for the devil, you disconnect. Does everybody get it? Why? Because we grieve the Holy Spirit. When we grieve the Holy Spirit, we disconnect. When we do something that we know that is not Ordained by the Lord, it's disconnect. First Peter chapter five. And when you disconnect, can you break the cycle? No. You get, look at when you disconnect from the spirit, you get connected to the cycle. Only your connection to the Spirit of God 
allows you because the anointing breaks it doesn't the anointing breaks so when you give the holy spirit you disconnect and you get connected to the cycle again first peter chapter five is everybody there good verse six therefore what humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that you, he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. And be what? Which means what? Alert. And be vigilant, which means consistent. Consistent to what? The ritual? The ordinance? Be consistent in the arena of heart to heart, spirit to spirit. Stay connected. Be consistent in going after him with all of your heart. Be consistent so that you know that you're sensitive to when you start having relationship out of the mind instead of the heart. You need to step back and get reconnect again because when it's just relationship out of the mind, there's disconnect. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. A roaring lion means he's going to speak to you. Seeking whom he may devour, cause to disconnect. Resist him, he said. Well, you know what? The Bible says submit to God, then you can resist the devil, right? So if you're not submitting to the things of God, if you're not seeking the Lord all of your heart, if you're not seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness, you cannot resist the devil. Why? Because you have disconnect. You can only resist him with connect. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Yeah. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you suffered a while perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. And hopefully that we learn from our mistakes. Amen. So we must maintain an area of alert and consistency. I can't emphasize that enough. I could speak on that every time we gather together. So when we come together, we seek and we maintain that first love, that first attitude of gratitude. Always stay grateful. Never forget where you came from. Once you've lost where you came from, you begin to get woozy-meezy. Oh. Woe is me. <laughs> Oh, really? Where were you a little while ago? Oh, man, I was in the gutter. Where were you now? Out of it. So why are you wozen? Grateful. Maintain an attitude of gratitude. Never, never, never lose where you came from and what he's done. Don't look at what you don't have, because what you don't have, you don't need. If God wanted you to have it, he'd get it to you. He'll make a way. He is God, you know. Oh, God ain't going to do it. Maybe I need to. Yeah, right. Let's everybody get this. Now, he directs our paths, doesn't he? The word says that the spirit guides us to all truth. Amen. The, the word says that the spirit uh, tells us things to come. So if there's a di disconnect with the spirit of the living God, you ain't knowing what's going on. You don't know what's coming. You're just caught up in the little world that we have around us. All about me. <laughs> Tiptoeing through the tulips. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Second Peter chapter one, why we're in Pete. Oh, we're verse two. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has what? Given to us what? Is anybody there? 
Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 2. We're in verse 3. And his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to what? Life and godliness, to the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also, for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, virtue to knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he who lacks these things is short-sighted and even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins and old man. Therefore, brethren, be even more what? Diligent to what? Make your call and election sure. If you do these things, you will never stumble, get caught in the cycle. Amen? Galatians 4. It's the anointing that we must maintain. Why? Because if you're maintaining the anointing, you're maintaining connect. Stay connected. Stay connected. When you hear that in the world, that means you know somebody, right? They're connected. We're connected. We're connected to the kingdom, man. What a great connection. I know the creator. <laughs> He's got my back. And you mess with me, you mess with him. <laughs> Amen. People mess with us, they mess with him. If you're in position. Galatians 4, verse 1. Speak this with me. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, but when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Daddy, that's relationship, connect. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. But now, after you have known God, and are rather are known by God, how is that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements? Ooh, to which you desire again to be what? In bondage. We don't want to do that, do we? Amen? We don't want to go back. See, you can start off right and end up bad. Why? Because of what? Disconnect. Everyone say disconnect. Grieving the spirit. Something we said we thought we agreed with. Grieving the spirit. Remember, his spirit is what connects us. Spirit to spirit. We always want to maintain spirit to spirit so we can't come into a place of compromise. We can't come to a place of laziness. We can't come to a place of, uh, of the area of just it's familiar. It must be new. The word says his mercies are new every morning. So if his mercies are new every morning, every time we come, we must be expecting, expecting, not just head worship, heart worship. I'm going to close it. Colossians 2. Hallelujah. 
Halleluja. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's speak this together. For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea and for many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both the Father and of the Lord Jesus, in whom are hidden all treasures of what? Wisdom and knowledge. Now this I say, lest any of you should deceive, uh, should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am not. I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order. Say good order. Good order. And steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheats you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And, and you are what? You are complete in him. Everyone say, I'm complete in him because I'm connected. Who is the head of all the principality and power. In him you are also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith and the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped away the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having what? Nailed it to the cross. Breaking bondage cycles. It takes the anointing. So the anointing must be constantly activated. When it's not activated, it's because there's a grieving of the spirit, grieving or disobedience or rebellion or touching something unclean, and there becomes a disconnect with the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you something. When you begin to drift, you don't even know you're disconnected. Why? Because it come, it, your heart relationship is now distant. It's now mind relationship. And this is not a mind relationship. This is spirit to spirit. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace that we may see it all the way through, hear all the way through, obey all the way through, and break every bondage cycle that the enemy has tried to place on us in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen.